Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on what part of the world you're in. Here in South Africa, it's about 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning. And today is the main cleaning day here at North Coast Constrictors. Now, I'm not going to do a whole video on cleaning, but I'm just going to show you just the basics of what uh, a cleaning day here looks like, what I use, how I do it, just a little bit of snippets here and there, it's not going to be a long video, just I've got everything prepared, all the tubs and I'm going to do a walk around and I'm going to show you how I prepare to clean my snakes, my hatchling tubs, my yearling tubs, my adult breeder tubs, what I use, the chemicals that I use, the disinfectant that I use and the kind of like the process that I go through, the different substrates and what I use for the hatchlings, what I use for the yearlings, what I use for the adults. So, yeah, that's uh, Saturday morning. We're at the Rattery and we spend about four or five hours at the Rattery. Saturday afternoon, I do what I can in the snake room. During the week, I am always spot cleaning and changing water so that the weekends aren't taken up. The whole weekend isn't taken up. I've got, well, quite a lot of snakes. Um, and uh, and then on Sunday, then I, I really get down to it and I do a proper clean. So let me let me do a little. I'm going to switch the camera around. Obviously, I can't do it from there because I've got no one filming me. So I can't kind of like point while someone follows me around with the camera. So what I'll do is I'll I'll take the camera and I'll just show you what everything's for. And then I'm going to switch around again and show you a couple of little. Uh, just little things that I do to try and make things go quickly and easily and why I'm doing it, how I'm showing you how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it and how I do my my cleaning. Okay, so hope you enjoy. Alright, so first of all I've got two big containers there, one with wood chip. Uh, this is actually going to go into my Doomerals bow tanks and uh, here is very thickly chopped wood uh, wood uh, wood shavings all right and over here I got my two uh, water buckets filled up with water and over here is my holding container for the snake that I'm going to use to clean over there is my big container where I'm going to be throwing all the trash all the dirty substrate over there is my um, bucket where all the, the water is going to get thrown into. Got my step ladder over there so that I can reach up to my hatchling racks. Uh, over here, I've got, I'll show you how I prepare this now. This is uh, my table where I do my, my hatchlings. Uh, that's a bottle of F10. And up there, I've got my paper towel, which I use to clean out the tubs after spraying them down with F10. Another spare roll of Colton paper, which is serrated. Another spare bottle of F10. And then those are obviously all my hatchling racks. Uh, my lazy boys pushed to the corner. Over there, I've got my big 25 litre containers of water with a jug that's filled with water. And uh, now I'm going to show you how we do the hatchlings over there. Okay, so... What I've got on the table here, this is what I keep my hatchlings in. Over here, this is half folded up. So what I do is I've got my Colton paper and I just break off pieces of Colton paper like this. Boom, 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 like that. And then what I do, and I do this, I'm not going to do all of them. There's 120 of these hatchlings to, to do. These go in the hatching racks and just fold them over like so. Okay. All right. That gives you an idea. What I do is I come over here to one of my hatching racks and pull out a hatchling. Okay. This is a hatching rack. Now, here's the water jar. Behind me, I'm not, I can't move the camera, but I showed you my bucket for the water. In it goes there. Now, I let I just take the snake out and I let it chill. All right, I got no issues with that. All right, and then up here you saw you saw my my, my paper towel. Um, I just there is 
folded up Colton paper inside there. This, this, this tub is, is especially mucky. Um, and then boof, in, that, in that rubbish bin that I was telling you about, I spray everything down with F10. I put that over there because there's a little crevice and uh, I don't want the, um, I don't want the snake disappearing in there. And then what I do is I give this a proper, proper rub down and get in all the nooks and crannies. These, these have got ribs. Uh, guys, I, 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 I do I do spot clean during the week. You know, she, she she's gonna have a little all my lavender being a hundred percent hit. That's uh, just the main tag coming off there. Um, I let them cruise around, have a little look. I always keep an eye on them. Always keep an eye on them. Make sure they're okay. Get, make sure all the F10 is out. Make sure all the urate, sometimes the urate guys, you know that white urate when it hardens up, it can get quite difficult to get out. Anyway, we've got it out. And unfortunately the label came off the front, so I'll just, I'll just put that back in there. That label tells me what snake it is, her morph. And then I plonk that down over there. I grab one of these. It's already folded to size perfectly. Fits inside the container like that. That little spot stays empty. And then I wipe down with a fresh cloth. Uh, paper towel being put in the inside of the water container. You know it builds up that uh, slimy, that slimy uh, slime. <laughs> you want to get that out and then boom, fresh water straight into the tub. And then I have a look at my girl. This is a lavender albino, 100% head pod, pos head clown. She's a female, she's a holdback. And I go over here, I have a look, make sure everything's okay. Check out the cloaca, look for, for anything. She's perfect, she's beautiful, nothing wrong with her. And then in she goes. She is, uh, in a, a next week, gonna be transferred into a yearling tub and boom, back into the racking system. And that is how I do it. I go through everything like that. So that, that, that's one example. That's how I do all of my hatchlings. And um, there's 120 to do today. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> right, let me show you one of the big ones. Okay, guys. Right, welcome back. Now we're going to do one of the big types. It's a big breed of female. Pastel, 100% head exentic VPR female. She is massive. She is huge. And she dropped a massive crap. And she's also pretty aggressive. So, I got the snake hook with me. So, open up nice and gently. First thing I do is just put my, a barrier between myself and, and the snake. I know she's just a ball path in, but anyway, the tub, water container. More dirty water into there. Boom, put it over there. Two sprays of F10, just let it sit. Now, gonna make sure that she's okay, she doesn't want to bite. Get her out. Okay, now, you guys can see that this is not a small ball python. Um, she's an absolute winner. Yeah, absolute stunning snake. She gave me the most incredible clutch. The sire was a a uh, super pastel yellow belly exantic male. Anyway, so what I do now is I put her in the holding container like that. And then I take all of her and I get it in there. Alright. So 
I'm only going to do one of these. I'm only going to do one of these because obviously it is boring as hell to watch, but I want, I want you to see just the, the entire process. Yeah, there's poo and urate and, and whatnot inside there, so, you know, we've got to, we've got to get it all out. Swap the sides down. They've been lying in the water bowl, splashing it around, the sawdust gets wet. Bacteria can grow. Alright, so I'll just wipe everything down, make sure I get the bulk of it out. And what I do, grab my F10, and I spray down the entire inside of the tub. And what I did was take a couple more rolls of my paper here, and first I start off with the water bowl. And I'll wipe out all the F10 from the water bowl. The F10, very, very pet friendly, reptile friendly. Any bacteria that was in the water bowl or around the water bowl is now out. Okay. And leave it to air dry a little bit there. Still take this, try and save as much. Uh, paper towel as possible guys you can imagine we go through a hell of a lot it's pretty expensive 250 rand a roll you can't buy the cheap thin one you have to buy the 3 kg or the 4 kg uh, and then what I do is I wipe down I wipe down the container like so sure all the sides and everything is done because the first thing she's going to do she's going to get inside there and she's going to start flicking her tongue around and smelling everything okay so once I'm happy and I've made sure that everything is dry okay well then grab my sawdust and put fresh uh, wood shavings rather fresh wood shavings just to line it not a hell of a lot at all push it down compress it a little bit something, something a little bit too much okay so and there's a reason why there's a little gap there because that's where the water bowl is going to go take my water bowl put it inside right in the front there's the hot spot at the back okay put the water bowl in there uh, grab my watering can fill it up about three quarters and then have a look, see how she's doing. She seems all right. Gently take her out. And so then I use the time to have a look at her. She's calmed down a little bit now. I'll have a look and see how she's doing. Look at her nose. Look at her belly. She's building already. She is building. She's already starting to ball wrap. It's March, we're gonna start pairing her up in two months time. She was the first girl to give me eggs. Have a look at her cloaca, make sure there's no discoloration around her cloaca, which there isn't. Um, and generally this snake is in perfect, perfect health. She's in perfect condition. She is an absolute winner of a breeder. She locks up multiple times, she eats great. And even though she's only hit for Exantic, the quality of Exantics that come out of this female are absolutely epic. She's one of the non-visual recessives that is hit for a recessive gene that I will not sell. Because the quality of the Exantics when they do come out in the visual expression of the gene are absolutely amazing. So she is... Uh, and she, you know, yeah, and she's a pastel as well, so 
But anyway, so now we get her back into her enclosure. Nicely, gently. She'll probably want to come out for a little look. Close that up. And that's one of the big ones done. And then a whole bunch more to go. All right. <laughs> Okay guys, I'm going to do one more, and the reason why I'm going to do this video, excuse the sweat, it goes with the territory. It's pretty hot inside, yeah, it's raining outside, I had the windows open to get some fresh air through here. Okay, the reason why I'm going to do this cleaning one is because number one, it's a beautiful snake, he shed out last night, and he has been on a substrate which I've stopped using, and I'm now transferring him for the first time onto that... Um, with those wood shavings. So let me pull out this boy. I'm sure you would have seen it if you followed my videos before. This is my Exantic, visual Exantic pied male. Uh, you can see he's had a fresh shed. There's some poop inside there. You can also see over here that I've been, it's a wood chip. Now, I've moved away from the wood chip. The shed goes inside there. Let's pull out this boy. And let's show them off now guys i know exantic a lot of i've said often on uh, the exantic gene that they tend to brown out and dull out as they get older um this is true but i found that when mixed with another morph and all, uh, usually pastel and exantic they, they stay black and white however when you combine them with another recessive gene like um a uh, uh, part they still tend to hold color, mostly the males. I've noticed that the females will brown out a little bit more. But now this male is two years old. Um, sorry, he's actually going on. He's two, two and a half years old. And he's still pretty black and gray. He has dulled a little bit. He has dulled a little bit for sure. But he's definitely not brown. Okay, so what we're doing is uh, we're putting this boy for the very first time on sawdust so water into the okay and then the usual spray down a little bit of f10 there guys f10 i don't have a bottle uh, yeah, it's in the kitchen where I, where I fill up all the water containers and then I, use, I dilute it, I dilute a ratio of one litre, that's about 750 moles, I think this is one litre. Um, I usually put three moles per litre and then two moles per 750. Uh, very, very good anti uh a disinfectant uh, for your for your for your snakes very friendly they were they're not toxic so um, yeah uh, I swear by that, that, that that's how I clean my tub when I do a deep clean guys you must understand that I do spot clean during the week you know if I've seen any poop uh, I spot clean and I just take out that section of poop or urate and it just makes my life a whole lot easier on the weekend because I've already gone through a whole bunch of, and I've got 300 odd snakes in this room. And, um, you know, I had to try and do all 300. Uh, and that includes the retex, sorry, so not in, not in this room, but I mean the retex alone, just to do the retex is a good, good few hours and there's only six of them. So yeah, once I'm happy, so I spot clean during the week to to resolve that issue. So I'm not sure the camera can pick it up, but what I'm doing now is I'm giving this guy a bit of sawdust now. This is going to be the first time for him on a, on a bit of sawdust. Or when I say sawdust, wood shavings rather, guys, wood shavings. Pine, pine wood shavings. Okay. Um, just also makes the room smell nicer. You know, you got your, your wood, water bowl, 
and uh, back in this is a 10 liter tub like a dry up rack he is an adult proven breeder he's just on 800 and something grams now at the moment in my water jug um, oh you can hear the rain in the background wonderful okay so he's ready to go back in and one last look at this butte, this power boy. He's got uh, four good females to pair up with this year. And we're going to hopefully get some lovely hatchlings from him. So, as always, I like the snakes to go in themselves. Just let them ease into it. Like so. So you feel rushed, keep your snakes calm, keep them chilled. Uh, this is going to be pretty new for him now, new feeling, new smell. <laughs> and uh, and I'll tell you something now guys, um, I, 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 to each their own, if you use cocoa husk, you use wood chip, or if you, even if you use paper, uh, or wood shavings like that uh, I've, I've just found that since i've changed over to wood shavings my cleaning is a lot easier my spot cleaning is a lot easier the room smells better it absorbs better um, and not only that the little wood chips you know when you're feeding uh, sometimes the wood chips can get stuck in the rodent's fur and the snake can ingest that with the wood shavings not so much so the, the wood shavings are quite big you know and usually when a snake is ingesting and bath, uh, chewing and it's going down that it, it gets goes off on the side of the mouth you know it gets kind of like pushed away off the rodent's fur so that's why i like it so guys that is a uh, three examples hatchling adult my female adult prune breeder male and then it's pretty much the same system throughout the rest of the tanks um, I have done retic cleaning videos, but I, I, I can't do a full retic cleaning video because it would just take, it would just, it's, it's just so boring. It really is. It's not as quick as this. I mean, we're talking about nearly two meter long enclosures, about 0 0.7, 0 0.6. So it's crazy. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Remember, F10, if you haven't got it, I'm not sure what the guys in the States use, a paper towel, and, uh, yeah, they're very, very important, guys. Uh, don't just wipe your tanks down. Just sterilize, sterilize, sterilize. Bacteria, bacteria. Especially in the water bowls, guys. I know you saw me with the hatchlings there. It's glass. Um, I didn't put any effort. Well, the one I put F10 and the one I didn't. And the reason why I didn't in the first one is because I did that one the other day and I sterilized it with F10. You only really need to do that once a week. I do a deep clean like this, like once a week or once every two weeks, depending on how soiled the tank is, sorry, the tub, the enclosure. Um, you know, snakes like to make their tubs their homes, it's like a burrow, so a little bit of poo, a little bit of urate, it's actually not such a bad thing. It's their scent, it's their smell, it's what makes them feel comfortable, but you, you know, if it gets too much, it's, it's unhealthy, you know, you do get bacteria and whatnot. So it, it's okay to have your tubs a little bit soiled. It's okay to have a bit of urea. It's okay to have a little bit of poo and then leave it for, you know, a couple of days and stuff like that. It's, I mean, snakes live in burrows. They, they don't have a housekeeper. They don't have a me or a you to go and wipe out all the shit and give, you know, and, and give them some fresh soil to lie in. No, it doesn't work that way. They, they, they will lie in there until it's time for them to move and then just go and find a new burrow. Um, but yeah, we're keeping them in an artificial environment and uh, you know, you, you, you have to clean for sure. The bacteria builds up and these are plastic, it's not earth. You know, the, it's not a, like a termite mound where the ball pythons, that's a notorious uh, natural habitat is a termite mound underground in the soil. And that is very absorbent, so when they wee, and poo and that it, it gets absorbed a lot easier which is why we use a substrate but that substrate has to be cleaned and that substrate has to be replaced and uh, choosing the correct one for you well that's up to you guys that's where you live and your temperature your humidity certain substrates hold humidity better certain substrates have to be sprayed down like cocoa husk you're constantly having to spray down cocoa husk so that it, it gets very very dry and you need to spray it down and wet it so that the humidity stays 
uh, stays high, you need about 70% humidity, 75% humidity. Um, inside your tubs right now, my humidity is in the, in the room is showing 78%, but that's because I live in South Africa and I live on the east coast of South Africa in a town called Belito, which is in if, uh, it's a cl uh, Durban, uh, if you look on a map of a South African map, KwaZulu-Natal is the province or what you would call a state in America and the, the city, like the biggest city in my, in my town would be Durban and I, I live probably about 35, 40, about 40 kilometers uh, north of Durban in a town called Belito and right on the beach and it is incredibly humid. Um, so we don't have a problem with humidity here at all and our snakes yeah, pretty much shed perfectly. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Just a little educational one for the, for, for, for the new guys, uh, the new breeders. That's how we do it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Take care. Cheers for now.